So the idea for today is we're going to get back into Cordova. We were using it two weeks ago where we set up a uh, project and then we um, took time to work with jQuery Mobile. We need to integrate the two. So I've got a copy of the last template. Looking inside of it, go ahead and go into your template project. Well, it's not a template anymore. We should, we should rename that, actually. It's not a template anymore. This is going to be based on the template we worked on. The template has that config file set up. It has the splash screen and the icons. So I'm using it as a as a template, but now I'm going to rename it to what our project is going to be. My SDCE. I'm using the dates. You know, I'm putting the date in the file just so that when I give you a copy of it, if you want the copy, it'll have the date. You don't have to name them how I name them, of course, but you need your own copy. What's that? This one is templates, like a folder of all of today's projects inside. Yes, th this is your template, but with today's date. So inside of the... Uh, I'm not going to call it a template anymore because it's not a template, it's our real project now. It's based on the template. This I'm going to call it the project. So in your own project folder, the My SDCE project. So inside of your project folder, inside the WW folder, remember we have this index, CSS, images, and JavaScript. Let's rename the index.html file to index2. It has some files, some text, some code that I want. We're going to eventually replace this old index file with our project, that whole jQuery mobile project. And guess what? Its starting file is an index file. So if I copy the jQuery mobile project from last week into this project, it'll ask, would you like to replace your old index? Not yet. It has some code that I want to take out of the old index file. Maybe we could call it index old. That might make a little more sense. I, I think I'll do that. You're going to take the template from the last time we worked on Cordova and put today's date on it. So the index file, I've named it old, index old. There's some code in there that I want. In another window, I'm going to go open up the project of the app WW file. So you see here, this is the jQuery mobile project, the app WW. I need to copy all of this into the WW folder of the project. Again, I'm not calling it template anymore because it's not the template anymore, it's our project. I notice in the jQuery mobile project it had index, and I don't want to replace the old index yet. So copy all of those files from the jQuery project into the MySDCE project. So what, when we create a brand new Cordova project, it automatically has an index, a JS, an IMG, and a CSS folder. We had our jQuery mobile project with its own index, images, the font, the jQuery mobile, and the jQuery, and the rest, my styles. So in theory, this is all we really need. We just need to add an index file to replace the index file that comes with Cordova. That's not fully correct, however, because the index file is connected to a JavaScript file, and it has other code that we still want. 
So index from jQuery Mobile and index old from Cordova. I want to open both of those in Notepad. You can actually select more than one file at once and then right click to open them both in Notepad++. So let's open both the old index file and the new index file in Notepad. I want to view side by side the old index and the new index. Obviously the new index is not called new index. It should not be called new index. It's index, but I'm just going to call it the new index, the jQuery mobile index file, and the Cordova index. I want to see them side by side. Remember you can do that by right clicking the tab and selecting move to other view. right-click, move to other view. And I prefer to have the old version on the left and the new version on the right. This is just for myself. This helps me. I work a lot with two files at once, and I'm going to get confused because they look so similar. Which file am I working on? Even though obviously one is called index old and one is called index. What helps me keep them, keep them separate and to understand what I'm working with, I like to have the old one on the left and the new one on the right. I read left to right. I grew up reading left to right. So I understand left to right. Left is the old file, right is the new file. You can use, of course, any way that makes sense for you to keep track of them. For me, it's not just enough that one is index old and one is index. The old one is on the left, the new one is on the right. And what I want to do here is copy some of these bits of code from the old file to the new file to make it easier on myself. All of this stuff about the license, I'm just going to delete it from index old. So all that comment, you can comment it out, but I'm just going to delete it. I just want my line numbers to line up. Doc type HTML head. Doc type HTML head. I'm sorry, I, I missed where you got the, the old index from. The old index is in your is in your original template file, yes. Thank you. which you need to rename. It's not called old index. You need to rename it to index old before you copy your jQuery mobile project into it, or it'll erase it. Because you've got the file called index, and you're putting in a new file called index, it's going to erase it. That's why I renamed it to index old first. So what I see on the old index, there's a big old block of comment, which I do want. So my idea is I'm going to copy some elements from the old index into the new index. I want to make my line numbers match up as much as possible. Obviously, some things I don't want, which we'll get to. <laughs> so um, this comment block, I'm going to copy that and paste it right after head. After that, I see a, a line that says uh, HTTP equivalent, content security policy, whatever. Then I see format detection telephone, MS app highlight. Those three lines I also want. I'll just paste them in after the comment. I'm just kind of matching up the lines in each file. I'm bringing them over. If they were in the original Cordova file, if you create a brand new Cordova project, these lines are in an index file. Therefore, they're necessary, they're important. This one was from the jQuery mobile project. I wasn't thinking about it in terms of an app yet. So, there it is. I've got uh, line 16, viewport. I've already got my own viewport right here. I'm going to use their viewport 
it's slightly better than ours. So that means I'm going to delete the viewport that, that we wrote previously. In the index new, then I'm going to remove. I divided it into two lines, so make sure you delete both of those lines. In index new, delete the old viewport. It's two lines. And then I'm going to copy the old viewport into the new file in the same line, just to line them up. Take that viewport and I'll add it after the MS app part. So line 16 is the viewport on both lines, on both files. I noticed that on ours we did it more correctly by having a UTF-8 character set. UTF-8 is not mentioned in the Cordova, that's shame on them. It should have had a, a, a a car set. You should always have a car set. For some reason, the Cordova crew didn't put a car set in their project. They should have. Um, they've got a uh, title, Hello World. We've got our title. Now they've got a, a reference over to index.css. Uh, we're not going to link to a separate index.css file. We've already got one. We've got my styles CSS. And their CSS file has a few things we don't need. So we're not going to take a link over to their index CSS file, but some of the code in the index CSS file I want to put into my CSS file. We can do that right now, yes. So, sorry to go back a little bit, I don't copy from the old, start from the, the command to jump to the, to the new part, right? Uh-huh. Yes, sir. Um, well, maybe. Uh, I, you need to make your file look the same as their file up to this point. So it is more than one line. I did copy like seven or eight lines. Okay, but that's from that first command. Man, um, to, the, to, the yeah, to the viewport. I did go to the viewport, yes. From the old one. From the old one, yes. To the viewport. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to open the old index file and the new, I'm sorry, the old CSS file and the new CSS file. Um, that means in the CSS folder I have the old CSS file and my styles is the new CSS file. And these are the new versions because they're coming from the jQuery mobile work that we did last week. So I'm going to go into the CSS folder, right click to open the index CSS, right click to edit with notepad and then I'm also going to uh, open up the my styles CSS. One thing that could happen again I want the old one on the left and the one on the right. One thing that could happen is that both of the index, both of the CSS files could open on one side or the other. That happens depending on what you've last selected. I didn't mention it, but I'll mention it now. If I had the index, the new index, and I'm opening up the old CSS, it's going to open on the right side because that's the last file I had open. If you want to switch their view, remember you can just easily right-click, move to other view. So I want the old versions of the files on the left, the new versions on the right. So it happened there. I put the new version of the file on the left. I want it on the right. Simply right-click, move to other view. Uh, we've got that whole comment. I'm going to delete it. This is just to line up the line numbers.
the old index file has a few things we do, we do want. We want the universal selector. Asterisk, um, which does a WebKit tap highlight color. I'm copying that from the old index and I'm pasting it before aside. That sets makes transparent, whatever it says there, it makes transparent if you were to highlight something so that it doesn't behave like an app, not like a website, more like an app. This body has a few things that I want, but a lot of things that I don't. Um, for example, these background colors here, I don't, I don't really want any of that background color stuff. We're defining the background color in config XML. We're also going to define it in a better way later when we add a new theme to our project. So I don't really need that. I don't need this background attachment. It's related. Font family. I could take this font family if I want or leave the default. It's got a font size. So all of these I don't really need either. I don't want text transform uppercase. So really what I what I want just is these these for uh, these first lines to this point here webkit this also relates to deactivating the the web aspect of the project if I only copy that much obviously I'm going to need to add my closing curly brace on body, I only need those first three web kits. And I'll add it after the asterisk. And then I'll close the curly brace. Make sure you close that curly brace so you'll break everything. Other things in the index, in the old index. Um, we don't need that about dot app. That's just going to put the Cordova logo behind everything. We don't need that. We don't need these heights. We've got some things regarding uh, landscape orientation. We don't need that. We're never going to go into landscape orientation. We've locked it to portrait. We've got some H1 sizes which conflict with what I'm already trying to do. We don't need that. We don't need these event listening and received. We don't need that either because this is just that very basic um, how it shows uh, device loading and ready to rock. Remember that? We don't need that. And then they've got an animation that happens with blink. We don't need anything. So we really only needed these very first few lines to prevent the, the highlighting that a website does. So I copy those over. And then um, if you go back to the index old and the index new, at the end of body, we've got Cordova, JS library, and index.js. We definitely need the Cordova line. The Cordova file is added when we do Cordova build. So if you don't see it in your folder, don't worry about it. We're not going to see a Cordova JS file in our project. Don't worry about it. It gets created and put into the right place when we do Cordova build. So I'm going to need this line of Cordova.js, and I need to add it toward the end of the project. So I'm going to copy that Cordova.js declaration, go all the way down. Uh, 
we will add it after jQuery, after jQuery mobile, paste. There lists the, the type of script. You can leave it as is. I don't like it there. We don't need it. HTML5 assumes JavaScript. I want to save a few bytes. I want it to look nice and organized the same. So I'm taking that away. You can leave it if you want, but I'm going to take it away. In older versions of HTML, we needed to specify that this script code is JavaScript. The older web browsers wouldn't know that exactly. So here we're saying we're in HTML5, so it assumes JavaScript when we had script. Then we've got a link over to index.js. <clears throat> On, on this one, um, we have not created a, a JS file. When we were working on our jQuery mobile project, we did not create a JS file. We might as well use the one that already exists. So I'm going to copy the reference to index.js and paste it after Cordova. And again, I'm going to remove that text slash JavaScript. So from the old index, I added to the new index a reference to index.js. What was the first thing you said when it doesn't have what? When it doesn't have the uh, index.js. Well, whenever you do... It's, it's there, exactly. Whenever you do Cordova create, it creates it. Now, let's take a quick look inside of uh, that index.js file. <coughs> inside the JS folder. The purpose of this index file, JS, is this sets up the various initialization, initialization routines of our app as well as any subsequent custom code. We started to do a little bit of that on line 35, where we said hide the splash screen once the app has loaded. So all of this initialization that goes on here, we need this, and then our custom code is going to go further past the rest. All this extra stuff relates to what's still left in the old index. At the very beginning, we've got the initialize, uh, the initialize uh, method of the app uh, constructor. And so we're saying document dot get dot dot document dot added that listener device ready. Uh, Cordova is going to emit the event of device ready. Notice the order. Try to load the Cordova code. If the Cordova code loads, it'll emit device ready. So then device ready is being listened for right there. So if this file is, is functioning, then it'll emit a device ready. After device ready is captured, we'll have on device ready function after that. On device ready function right there. This is further to, to confirm that it has received the device ready. Okay, received event further is right here. So all of the code that we will then further write for all the cool complex stuff we will do should be inside of received event. Once it takes us to received, hide the splash screen and do other things. 
basically uh, hide the hide the code of listening, which is right here, connecting to a device, and then display the code of received. Received device is ready. So then the rest of all of this is is superfluous because we know that when we when once we get to received event the, the app is ready. This was just as the plain old when we do code of a create we needed to show something connected to device. Ready device is ready. We want our actual project to load up. So all of this uh, from about line 36 to 41, we don't need. That's from the basic Cordova project, which is just showing right, devices ready. We don't need that. So we index.js file delete, uh, 36 to 41. Var parent element, get element by ID, down to receive the element, set attribute, and delete it. That is code from an index file that is eventually going to be removed. So you see, it wasn't as easy as simply dropping a new index file into a Cordova project. It had these extra pieces that we needed to deal with. So at this point, I want to check if everything is kosher. If it is, then we can clean this up a little bit. So what I want to do is a save all, file save all for everything. Everything that we've changed, I want to save it. And then we need to do a node in the command prompt, Cordova uh, run Android or Cordova emulate Android, I want to see if it loads up on in the project. I want to see that my jQuery mobile project now has been integrated into this template file that is now our project. So we're not going to be able to do the run Firefox anymore. Save everything, open your node command prompt if you don't have it open yet, and go to the folder where this project is at. Mine is on my flash drive, so I go to the F drive. You should be used to this now. So F colon to go to my F drive. I have all my apps saved in an apps folder called apps. So I'm going to switch CD apps. I see the template. We don't want that. We want today's work. I'm going to CD into today's folder. Remember the shortcut as you start typing the name of a folder, mm -hmm. press tab, and it'll start to fill in the rest of the name. <coughs> I'm in today's project folder. Cordova run, uh, run Android device, if you've got a device. If you don't, you can do Cordova emulate Android to run in the emulator, or Cordova run browser to see it in the browser. I'm going to give it a shot on my device. I've got one plugged in. I'm going to see if I typed everything properly and if it works. I'll check if mine works, and then if it does, I'll, I'll help out. I'll help out people. But the whole idea is that we're taking pieces of the old project and adding it to our new project.
Save a copy of what I've created right yeah, now. Yeah. Let me finish the build. I can't copy it while it's building, but I'll, I'll put it in a moment. I need to wait for mine to compile to see my results. I'll put a copy of my code in the folder, of course, in a moment, but I can't copy it while I'm compiling. And of course, the problem with using my code at a certain point is that it's my project. You haven't, you don't have your code, you don't have your customization. So this will take a moment on mine because it's compiling the new font. It's compiling all my new jQuery mobile screens. It's compiling a lot of new content. So mine built. Mine took almost three minutes to build, and then it's about to put it onto my device. Let's see if that wants to work. So it's putting it on. It says my template. There's my ugly splash screen that I made a while ago. It's rotating around. It took a little bit longer to load than the very first time because there's more to load, but it didn't take the whole 10 seconds. Then it went on to the index, the new index. There it is from a distance. Hopefully you can see that it's the, it's the new jQuery mobile project. I can kind of move around there, I can go to my art screen, I get the animation, I get the various screens, those slide over nice and crisp, well, that's pretty cool, depending on your device. Uh, I open up item 1, 2, 3, again if it's my project it's still called item 1, 2, 3. If it's your project there's your hard work of making up those classes and your fonts. I can click the calendar and it's sidebar calendar and I can swipe it closed. I couldn't do that as an as a website because it was a website. But I've got the close button or I've got swipe to close the calendar. I can look there. I can go to the, the little pop-up screen for about. It pops up there. I have to play with some of these sizes of fonts and such. That'll come later. So I've loaded up the project, the jQuery mobile project. It's a real app now. It still kind of feels like a website. It is behind the scenes, but it's running on a real device. And I can go to my app, my app drawer where all my apps are stored, and I see, I see the project with its own little icon and everything. Actually, my I, I think the project is still called my template. I never changed it in the config file. But I see it here, it's got the little cat face um, with a little cute hat, and it loads up the project. The external catalog to the website doesn't quite work. It does load up a website, but not exactly how I want. It's loading it up in a separate web browser. I want it to load in the in-app web browser, in the Cordova web browser that's coming up soon. It kind of gets weird at that point. but. In theory, we've integrated a plain old website project into our Cordova project. So if you've learned how to make websites, you know, in the feud class on your own, in Dreamweaver, etc., any kind of web project you make can then be put into a Cordova project. We did have to kind of then tie up a lot of loose ends about copying some of these things to the other project. But, um... It kind of makes sense. What am I copying from the old index? What am I putting into my new index? What am I omitting and so forth? So let's uh, 
me pause at this point if people need a little help. I'm also going to put a copy of my of my item at, in the folder up to this point if you want it. But again, it's my project. You're going to lose your own edits 